Finally, Esther, and that's the 17th book of history, is all about the God who is in control. As long as man has been on earth, Satan has sought to derail God's plan of redemption. Cain killed Abel. God had to exterminate the contaminated race uh, for Noah and his kin. Uh, Babel unites against the world against God. Abram is chosen. The Jews are persecuted first by Egypt, then by Amalek. And now the drama of God's plan and Satan's attack is more clearly seen in this book than anywhere else. Why? Because the last Amalekite, is Haman the Agagite. And he manures himself, finally, in this book, that he is able to kill all the Jews. He gets an executive order in the Persian Empire to kill all the Jews. It's the first time that, that all of them were identified because the Persian Empire spread all the way to Egypt and all the way to India and all the way around what we would call uh, the Middle East. And so it was totally in control. He was second in command, and he gets the executive order signed and sealed by the king to kill every Jew. It's the only time in history that every Jew could have been killed. And this book is all about how how an unfaithful servant, Saul, the king, didn't kill Agag, the king of the Amalekites. I mean, he he killed Agag, but he didn't kill all of the people. And so now that disobedience rises up until Haman is ready to kill all the Jews. And Esther stands in the gap and serves the Lord. And what's neat about this is, God's name is not even mentioned in the whole book. Uh, What are the points of it? Well, just in conclusion, the major themes are God has promised deliverance for his people. I'll tell you what, whatever God promises he delivers, he will deliver them. God has promised conflict for his people. Uh, As the songwriter said, God hath not promised skies always blue, flowers strewn pathways all our lives through, but God hath promised strength for today, light for the pathway. Uh, You know, all through our lives, God has promised that he would give us through the conflict is grace, but then he promised rest for his people. The conclusion of this book, God is at work guiding his plan from start to finish. Philippians 1.6 says, being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will finish it. God will defeat his enemies, whoever they are. God always wins. His sovereign plans are never frustrated. Human hatred and bitterness always lead to destruction, as in Haman. And God uses regular people like us who will obey him just like Mordecai and Esther. And I think of Second Chronicles 16.9 in this light, which says this, that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, looking for one whose heart is completely toward God, that he may show himself strong through them. God shows himself strong through all the books of history, all 17 of them, and every one of them reveals Jesus Christ, but every one of them shows that God will take those who will be his servants and will use them for his glory. And I hope tonight when you think of the Old Testament, you'll think of people just like us, struggling just like us, that God uses for his glory because they say, yes, I'll obey you.